In this lesson, let's talk about how ICC profiles relate to the images that we're working on. So go ahead and open up Photoshop. I want you to go back into an area we explored earlier. Go up to the word Edit and go down, 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 down into Color Settings. Now in Color Settings, I want you to change it to either North American General Purpose 2, Europe, or Japan, depending on what area you're in. It's not going to change what we need to do. I'm going to stick to North American you will notice the RGB working space. Now RGB would be like for digital photography, so we're fine there. If we click that button, we do have several spaces up here. Now I've got a lot of other ones you may not have, like I've got one actually even for my HP printers, for glossy papers and even tricolors. I've got Nikon stuff in here. I've got even my LP monitor stuff if I'm going out to calibrate to monitor. These are the ones we need to talk about because we all have those. Now the default is sRGB. The three that are really the most important are sRGB, Adobe RGB 1998, and ProPhoto. Now sRGB has the smallest area of color of those three, and it's very good to use. It's a very generic one, but it's really good to use if you're not sure what it's going out to because it limits the amount of color. The RGB up here is like having, I don't know, a bigger box of crayons. You got more colors. And then ProPhoto is so huge it actually has colors that the human eye can't even see. That's how big it is. And that's kind of cool. And you say, okay, I'm using that one. Well, think of what you're doing. If you choose a color space for your working color space that is greater than your output device, you will be seeing colors that the output device does not produce. That's why they play it safe and stick it on sRGB. Okay, now if you know where you're going out to, and that might be through information from the output people, you know, like maybe it's a service bureau, or it might be through experimentation on your own equipment, then by all means, change this. We'll leave that at sRGB for now. But that's the reason why we don't go to a higher value, because we'd literally be working with more color than we could actually use. See these three options? You've got ask when opening, ask when opening, ask when pasting. Select all three of those. Turn them all on. Now you'll notice it says custom. That's because we changed this down here. If this were something that you were doing that was very important, you made a lot of other changes, you might want to actually save it and give it a name. Go ahead and click OK. Now go to Bridge. And we go up here to the word File and go down to Browse and Bridge. Or if you have it open, you can Shift Tab through it. Now I am in my Working Files and in Chapter 3, that's what we're in, you'll see a couple of images. Open up Flower 1, double click on it. Now we get a warning. Now you might get this all the time anyway, but the warning is because we turned on to warn us if this happens. So the obvious question here is, if this is a problem, why isn't it warning us right up front? Well, the reason it doesn't do that is because it expects us to understand the process and understand that if we want to change it, this is one of the ways we can do it, by turning those options on. So what would you like to do? The embedded profile in the actual file that we're trying to open is Adobe RGB and our working space as you remember is sRGB. We've got three choices. Number one, use the embedded profile instead of the working space. Now that's going to preserve the embedded profile and we'll use it to show the appearance of the image correctly and when saving the file that profile will be embedded and that enables yourself or others to see its intended appearance. The next one is convert documents colors to the working space. Use this one only if you are absolutely sure that the embedded profile is actually correct for the image's camera or scanner because it's going to convert the image to the working space RGB numbers while retaining its appearance. Now here's the cool thing to remember. When you're working in Photoshop on an image and you change the embedded profile, you are not actually changing the colors. You're only changing how the colors are interpreted for another device. And that's very important to remember because if you come back and go, man, I really messed it up and I saved it and I did that a month ago, you can change it again. The original information is there. It's only how it's interpreted. That's all you're doing here. Now the last one down here is discard embedded profile. Don't color manage. This will actually display image information using your working space. Now it's a safe option if you're kind of unsure of the image's correct color space. You come back later and change it if you want to. Now I'm going to stay with my embedded profile and then go ahead and click OK. Now the image itself really isn't changed. It's only changing the interpretation once I leave here. 
Well, let's go ahead and close this one out. Let's go back into Bridge. Browse in Bridge. Here's the next one. Double click and open that one. Watch what happens. Well, nothing. That one was in the working space of Photoshop the way we defined it. So what if, once we have an image open, we want to change that working space? If you go up to the word edit on the pull down menu and go down, 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 you can say assign a profile. Now in assign a profile, you can say don't color manage. It's got a profile, I don't want to use it. You can say put in the working profile, which is sRGB. Or you can say, change it to something that I want. And you'll notice it does now impact how we view the image. The good news is, although it's changing the way the image looks, it's not really damaging or adjusting the colors. It's only reinterpreting them. And so we can come back here anytime we want to. So if you feel that what you're working on requires a different ICC profile to get it to print correctly or display or whatever you're doing, it's a very easy thing to do. Now let's go back up to the word edit and let's go down. Let's turn off those options and color settings. And I'm just going to go ahead and turn those off and click OK. OK, Andy, what if I have an image open and there hasn't been any errors because I turned those off? Is there a way I can tell what this particular image is in terms of its profile? Well, one way is just simply come here. This little option right here, down at the very bottom of the screen. If I click that little triangular button right here, I can go into Document Profile, and it will tell me the profile that's there. That's one way out of many to do it. So if you are curious, and you didn't turn on those warnings, which I usually don't, I know what I need to do if I need to check it, is basically you can check it right down there if you want to. But let me show you one more thing. Let's go ahead and go back to Bridge. I have one more image, and that is a raw image taken with one of my Nikon cameras. NEF is the designation for raw in Nikon. Double click on that one. Now it's going to open it up in the raw plugin. Now we're going to spend a whole lot more time here. I just want to show you one thing. Down here, it almost looks like a link, doesn't it? Go ahead and click that, because it is, in a sense, a thing you can open up. Here's the color space here. Now what I usually do if I am working on raw images, this is where I would change it because I have all the color information. Raw images have all the information. They haven't been manipulated yet. That's why they're actually called raw. And raw doesn't really stand for anything. It's just raw, meaning it's raw data. I also do something else, which is change the bit depth usually to 16, but we'll talk more about that later. But if you do want to change it here before you bring it into Photoshop, you do it right here. Let me go ahead and change it. Say to Pro Photo. We're changing where the information is in the image. We're not really, again, damaging it. We're just changing it. So whether the image is raw or whether the image is just simply, say, a PSD or a TIFF, working with profiles helps you get that one step closer to getting the perfect print or the perfect web document or whatever it is.